Hey, what is up guys? Kalem or Kalem's Fish Tanks and welcome back. Uh, it's been a long time since I posted a video and I thought let's start 2021 off with a bang. I'm going to be doing a full tour of all the tanks I own except for this one. So I'm going to be doing my other seven tanks. I'm not doing my 7.5 gallon behind me because this tank's going to get a video all to itself. I'll show you guys a couple little teasers but this is my 7.5 gallon low-tech tank and I'm just kind of waiting for the plants to stop melting a bit and I'm posting progress pictures over on Instagram and then once I'm ready I'll post the full scaping video here on YouTube. Choosing which tank to start with was honestly a pretty hard decision but I decided to go with my 20 gallon long. This is a tank you guys have never seen before on this channel, I've never shown it and that's mainly because it's in a really weird position to film but this is one of my most high-tech setups. It's got a Fluval 2.0 and a Fluval 3.0, and the 2.0 is set to 100%, and the 3.0 is set to 70%. And I'm also running a pH controller on this to monitor my CO2 levels. So it's pretty fancy, and this tank is set purely with the goal for hoarding plants. Uh, that's what I love to do, so I keep all my hoarded plants in here. Uh, ones that I love and I just can't get rid of, and I don't have any space within my scapes, I move them into here, and then I just grow them out for profit, or if I ever decide to use them again, I can take trimmings and replant them. So if you're interested in plants, shoot me a DM on Instagram, and if you're in Canada, I can probably send you some. But this tank holds a lot of my rarer species and a lot of my favorite species. And I counted up how many plants were in this tank before I shot this video, and there's 22 different species in this little 20 gallon long. A couple of my favorites are Rotella bonsai, which has been one of my all-time favorites. Absolutely stunning plant. And then I've got a couple rare ones in there as well, like a Nubius nana pinto, which I have an absolute ton of in there, uh, which I didn't realize I had so much. And then I also have Echinodorus aflame, or purple night sword, which gets this super cool purple color you get from no other plants in the hobby. So the maintenance on this tank is pretty easy. All I do is a water change once a week, and then because I don't have a lid, I have to top it off once a week as well. And then I pretty much add um, Tropica Aquarium Fertilizer. That's what I've been using recently. I just switched over to it and I'm finding I'm getting a lot less algae because of it and I'm dosing it in super low concentrations compared to EI which I used to use in super high doses. Next up let's talk about my leopard gecko Oakley. She lives in a pretty spacious tank. I got it when my pet store was closing down. Unfortunately the glass isn't in the best condition so it's pretty scratched up but the tank isn't really for too much viewing. It's not like my fish tanks. It's about 40 gallons, and you can see I have a cocoa bark substrate in there. And now these are pretty big chunks of bark, so I'm not too worried about her eating any, or any kind of compaction being caused. And the reason I have these is because this used to be a bioactive vivarium. I used to have isopods in there, but unfortunately I think most of them have died. But I'll be picking up some more once my local fish stores open up again, and I can go in and get some. So this is Oakley. I've had her for about five years and there's not much to her. She's pretty calm. She just likes to chill and she is a super hypo tangerine, uh, sorry, sorry, super hypo carrot tail. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all there is to Oakley. If I can get a good focus on her, she wants to focus on my fingers. There we go. There's Oakley. But yeah, you can see she's super pretty. I can feel her back feet slipping. Going with the trend of tanks in my room, let's talk about my smallest tank I own, which is my one gallon planted bowl. This tank is so easy and probably one of my favorites when school is going on, and that's because I don't have to do any work. I just did my first maintenance on this tank in six months. I trimmed up the carpet to make it look good for, um, for this YouTube video. But all this takes to set up is an air pump, a uh, lamp of some sort, and some aqua soil and plants. If you guys want a tutorial on how to do one, let me know down below in the comments because this is super easy and you can get a super stunning result, no problem at all. Next up we've got Dawn. Dawn was not a pet I expected. Dawn is a green and all and basically what happened was I have the whole story somewhere on my YouTube channel way back. But basically what happened is my mom's friend ordered plants from Costco and when they came in there was a little green lizard on them. I took Dawn in, I ran over there because I love pets, and rescued Dawn and then proceeded to set up a vivarium for her and after about a week I had it fully set up and got her moved in. And then Dawn started having 
babies. Babies started showing up in the tank, and most of them did die, unfortunately, because I just didn't have enough food to keep them alive. But I did end up with one, so now there is two green anoles in this tank. And now it's a little too small, probably. I definitely don't recommend putting two green anoles in this small of a tank, but I didn't really have a choice, and I don't have the space, unfortunately, to upgrade. This tank is also a bioactive vivarium. You can see there's a ton of plants in there. I just recently picked up some new plants from Tails and Scales, got some bromeliads in there that are doing pretty well. And uh, overall, this tank is pretty low maintenance as well. I just missed it every couple days. Throw in some crickets, and then occasionally throw in some fish food too to work as fertilizer for the plants. Let's talk about the final tank in my room, which is probably one of my favorite vivariums I've ever set up, and that's my UNS 5S that I got over at Steel City Scapes. He hooked me up with a really good deal, and this is my little clone trooper vivarium. Since the last time I showed this tank, I've added some little clone troopers to it, and I have a full video on how I set this up somewhere on my YouTube channel. It's basically just a bunch of moss, and a couple different aquarium plants have been growing in there submerged. You may have seen at the start, I had some cling wrap on there. I keep that over the tank to keep in humidity and then take it off whenever I want to take pictures or just look at this vivarium. Since I have a drainage layer, I barely have to miss this tank at all. I missed it every once, once every two or three days and I don't do anything special for the plants. I just trim them when they're overgrown and then occasionally I'll pump in a little bit of fertilizer into my spray bottle to give them a bit of a boost to grow better and that's literally all I do. All the plants have been going completely nuts in this tank, and it's turning into quite the jungle pretty fast. Now let's talk about my 24 gallon tank. This tank is in a bit of what I call a transition phase. I've been slowly preparing to rescape it, so it's not looking the best, and it's also a bit of a green spot algae factory. I've been getting a ton of that, no idea why, but that doesn't matter because I'm rescaping it soon. You can see there's a ton of fish in here. There's about 18 glow light tetras, which is a lot for a 20 gallon, and then three ember tetras as well. And the reason I can hold all this is because I have a really big filter on this tank. It's an Eheim Classic 600, as well as there's an absolute ton of fast growing plants, which soak up all the nutrients created from these fish. Now, am I happy with this tank? Kind of. Half the tank looks really good. You can see where all the hydrocodyl tripartita is growing super well. I also have some Anubius nana pinto and some Windelaw java fern. And then the other half of the tank is pretty much just crypts. It's pretty boring. There's a ton of crypts in there, so I've slowly been trying to sell those off. And uh, eventually, when I rescape this, I'm planning on doing a Dutch style aquascape. You'll see that later on when I finally get my light in, when I finally have time to rescape this tank. All I do for this tank for maintenance is every single week I have to scrape the glass because I get so much green spot algae and then I do a 50% water change and then the next day I add a couple pumps of Tropica Aquarium Fertilizer and I use the one for this tank without any nitrates and phosphorus because I have a ton of fish in there and I have to feed this tank a ton so I don't really need those and the extra nutrients will just cause algae in this aquarium. So I saved the best tank for last, and that's my 40 breeder. This tank is my pride and my joy. It has been in my fish room forever. I've had this tank for about three years now, and it's gone through so many different escapes, and I've learned so much with this tank. Recently, I upgraded to the Chihiros WRGB2, the 90 centimeter version, and the results I'm getting are absolutely insane. So this tank has so many different fish in it, and that's because it's been around for so long and I don't really like selling all my fish. Some of the main attractions are probably my tiger barbs. They are one of my favorite fish to watch. They are so rambunctious, they're always up to no good, uh, chasing each other around the tank. And they're not a fish I recommend if you have smaller dainty fish, but if you have bigger fish like I do, you, they can definitely handle these tiger barbs. They are so much fun to watch, and uh, they're little sharks when it comes to feeding. I also have Nusi, my pro Grammy, who is absolutely massive now, and she is absolutely stunning. One of my favorite fish in this tank, and uh, I always love seeing her come out, but she's a bit camera shy, unfortunately. And what else do I have notable fish in this tank? Oh yeah, I have a, a Epistogramma in here as well that doesn't have a name yet. So let me know some name suggestions down below for this Episto. So let's talk about the plants in this tank. Ever since I switched to the WRGB2, they have been going crazy. Um, I had been trying to carpet this Monte Carlo for about three or four months, 
probably a bit longer actually and it was kind of carpeting but it wasn't really dense it was really really sparse and then as soon as I got this WRGB2 within two weeks it had fully carpeted the tank and now I'm gonna probably have to trim it soon because it's growing so well all the other plants are doing really good I'm still trying to figure out how I should be dosing nutrients uh, because I just switched up to Tropica which I mentioned earlier but this is also the tank that has all my Busephilandria. I've got mainly two kinds in this tank, Busephilandria Montleana Brownie Red and Busephilandria Arrogant Blue, which cover up this massive piece of eucalyptus root, which make the centerpiece of this tank. One of the reasons I'm switching to these Chihiros Light is because of their super good spectrum. If you see the Ludwigia Palustris in this tank, it's absolutely stunning how red this stuff is. And I'm going to be planning to test out this red and how red I can get different plants under the Chihiros Vivid when it finally comes in. So that's going to be super exciting. So of the seven tanks, which was your favorite? Let me know down below in the comments, but that pretty much wraps it up. That's all the tanks I have, except for the 7.5 behind me, which will be getting a video all to itself once I finally get it growing properly. But anyways, guys, that about wraps it up for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like the video and also subscribe. I'm really going to try to update, update you guys more often. I know I've said that so many times. But uh, I'm going to try to start taking YouTube seriously. And if I don't, by April, I should definitely be doing it because I will be done school by then. But anyways, guys, this was Calum's Fish Tanks. Peace.